Hey everybody, it's kind of a cold Thanksgiving here. I got my belly full, but instead of taking a nap or sitting around watching football, I want to work on the tractor. Got a couple of little projects to do on it. Well, I got it in here in the garage where it's nice and warm. So let's go through what we're going to do. First is a bit of a repeat. I'm going to take off that steering sector cover because uh, it leaks. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to film much of this this time because I covered all of that in the steering gear rebuilt that I did. But that one has always kind of seeped a little oil. So we're going to take that off, put a new O-ring in it, see if we can't get it sealed up. I just siliconed it on there, but that back edge where it's flat doesn't have a flat surface to uh, really silicone onto the housing. So we need to kind of, uh, we're pretty much stuck using the O-ring. The O-ring that I put in it was one from Steiner Tractor or one of those tractor supplies, and it was kind of, Kind of hard, little undersize it can look like. So I've got some newer, softer, maybe a little fatter O-ring. So I'll try putting one of them in there. If that doesn't work, I'll probably do what a lot of people have done is go from 90 weight gear oil to cornhead grease, which is thinner than regular grease, but thicker than 90 weight. It's supposed to really help with that oil leaks. Now the main emphasis is over on this side of the tractor because a while back, I managed to roll the tractor off a little retaining wall and did a number on my muffler there. So we'll be putting a new muffler on, which that's that's easy enough. Or I'm also going to pull the uh, intake and exhaust manifold. As you can see down in there, we got some oil leakage there from the valve covers. So we'll pull the uh, intake off. We're going to pull the valve covers off, take a look at the valves. Then we'll clean those covers up, put new gaskets in and get that sealed up. That way we can get the oil leak fixed on this side. Because I'd like to, uh, you know, I'm working on painting this thing as I go back. Now one thing that I read looking at the shop manual there that I didn't know was I assumed these uh, valves just had mechanical, I mean they had mechanical tappets, but I assumed you could just adjust them like most things. And this tractor I probably can but anything before 1952, they had non-adjustable valves. But this one is a 52 model, so it should have valves that you can adjust. And Ford recommended that if you were in there for anything to retrofit it, put the adjustable valves, tappets, and everything in the older tractors. And it also has something I'd never seen before, is a free-floating retainer for the exhaust valve. And what that does is normally you're Normally your valve is held in with keepers into a retainer and then the camshaft pushes on a lifter or a bucket and they make solid contact or they have a slight amount of gap in there. But the valve is held rigid to the spring. Now this setup, you still have a valve lash adjustment between the tappet and this cap on the exhaust valve. But there is a little bit of play, a few thousands of play in between the cap and the valve itself. The way they they cup the end of the the end of the valve, and then there's a retainer that goes on there. So that way it's got a little extra play in it for whatever reason they thought it needed. But that you can actually have the valve open and you've still got a little movement in it in between the valve and the retainer which is unlike anything else I've ever worked on. Anything else, the valve is coming open, it's solid. So that's kind of interesting. I want to see if it's got that. It should have that. Everything since the VIN number says it's a 52 model. So we'll take a look at all that while we're in there. Check the clearances, see if we need to adjust it. I'm not sure about adjusting it. They show a special tool that I don't have to hold the tappets when you adjust them. Uh, if we need to adjust them, I'll have to figure something out, but I'm for sure going to check the clearance. All right, so let's get busy. Okay, I'll start out taking this steering part off just so it can be drained. I'll loosen up the lock nut. Back it out a little. And we'll take two retainer bolts off. Now I'll just take a Allen wrench and run that adjuster in, which it will push on the gears. And since the gears can only go in so far, that'll bring the cover right out. And 
take that lock nut off. There's a little rubber seal here, so don't lose it. There's the rubber washer. Now we got gear oil running out. That comes loose. And the adjuster bolt slides into the end of the gear like that. So that's all out. We'll let this drain and then we'll get a new O-ring on here and see if we can't seal that up better. And we'll start out with taking the muffler off. Got to undo this clamp here. And when somebody put this clamp on the last time, which would be me, I use metric bolts because that's what I have. And the clamp does have it, it only goes on one direction. If you get it on upside down, this one is with the lettering down. Because if you put it on the wrong way, it doesn't grab the pipe and the manifold properly. Okay, the exhaust is in a slip clamp on the back. Let it slide it away. Well, that's what I did to the exhaust. Next up, I'm going to undo the breather pipe from the card. Get it out of the way. Yours will be mounted up to a canister, most likely. Fuel's turned off over at the petcock. So we'll disconnect it here. It'll leak a little bit out. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it at the uh, sediment bowl so I can get the line completely out of the way. It just makes it easier not having that in my face. And that leaves us with the linkage here going to the governor, to the carburetor. And the linkage there is spring-loaded, so you push it forward, and you can slide it off the ball there on the governor. Now we got the same kind of linkage on this rod going to the choke. I'll pop it loose in the carburetor and slide the choke rod back out of the way. I slid the choke rod back so it's out of the way. Now we should be able to pull the carbon manifold in one piece. In the factory manual, see what this is supposed to have. We've got one stud and nut there, and then the others are bolts. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be stud and nut all the way across or bolts. Either way, we're going to take it out and take it off. I'll take this breather off there. Give me a little better access to that one bolt. And I know Dad had a new manifold put on this thing years and years ago because it would broke off right there. So I don't know. Somebody didn't use the right hardware to put it back on or what. But I'll look in the manual and see. That actually took the nut off. I figured it might pull the whole stud out. Well, I did not realize those holes go into the cooling jacket. <laughs> I figured they were blind holes. They're open. That's probably why they use studs, so they can seal the studs up. Oh, well. Either way, I need to drain the coolant. Draining the coolant out of the system is pretty easy. We got a plug right there behind the starter. Originally, that would have been a, uh, a shutoff valve. But my shutoff valve was all messed up. Just put a quarter inch pipe plug in there. Pretty easy to take it back out whenever I need to drain it. Okay, note to self. If you're gonna have it set up that way, have a little hose nibble that you can screw in there. And that way, get most of the coolant in the bucket.
Much easier. Okay, cool and screen down. <laughs> yeah, I should have known. So now I can go ahead and finish taking the manifold off without dumping coolant everywhere. Even though I've already dumped coolant everywhere. Oh, and I did look in the uh, the service manual, and it has parts breakdowns, everything. And yes, these are supposed to be studs. I'd say studs probably more good. I might put bolts in. Bolts have been working for a long time. Say I may go ahead and put the bolts back in. Just clean them up and seal them. Now, yeah, got some blue uh, blue silicone on them. I wonder if that was going to come out around that. Uh... What was that? Oh, fly horse. I wonder if that was going to come out around that breather. Which that breather is built into that valve cover. Okay, we'll set this out of the way. Yeah, besides the coolant spill, that's not hard at all. Picked up some new gaskets at Tractor Supply. They had them in stock. They keep quite a few 8-in parts right on the shelf. Now, your governor linkages are in the way of this valve cover. And you can see the valve covers are what's been dumping oil down the side of the engine. It's dry above the manifold. And then just solid sheet of oil down below it. So we'll take the governor off which is going to be one oil line, two bolts, and then the tachometer cable. So I'm going to screw the tack cable, swing it out of the way, undo the oil line, and then we'll take out the two bolts holding the governor. rod from your throttle going to the governor. Same deal, slide it, push it back. I think for clearance, take the other end of that rod off and just slide it back, set it out of the way. And now we're down to the valve covers. They're a stud and nut assembly, so we'll undo the nut and take those off. Well, one came out with the nut, one took the whole stud out. Yeah, the old gasket. Not in the best shape. Same here. Gasket's hard as a rock. No problem. That's uh, not too bad. I've seen a lot of newer engines that had a lot more sluds than that in it. So, slap some Valvoline Restore and Protect in there and clean this baby up like new. <laughs> okay, I think I've got this figured out now. When I was looking at the valve holding tool, uh, I wasn't exactly sure what I was looking at. Right now, you now that one's one's open, but you see the see the holes there in the tappets, the uh, the lifters, the tool that holds those in place because those can rotate around. It wraps around the one next to it and then goes back and has a little hook that drops down into one of those holes. And that holds the lifter to where it can't move and then you take a ground down 7 16 and you can move this adjuster screw without the whole lifter moving. And they have right and left hand so you can go either direction. Now, I don't have that tool, and they're pretty cheap to buy from, like, Steiner. They're, like, a set of them's, like, 18 bucks. But, I'm going to go through and check them all. If they do need adjustment, then I'm going to have to decide if I want to build something to hold them so I can adjust them now, or wait, get the tool later, or what I want to do. 
But right now, oh, and also, this does have the, this does have the floater style or rotator style deal on the exhaust valves. Because this side right here is an intake and it's got a standard retainer and keeper and the end of the valve. And see how it's kind of narrow right there? Now the exhaust in this area is wider. And that's that rotator piece that fits around the end of the valve, the end of the valve stem, and gives it a little clearance inside there along with the clearance between that cap and the adjuster screw. So kind of an interesting setup. Right now, I'm going to put the valve covers back on temporarily so I don't get any more crud in the engine, and I'm going to clean this whole side of the engine up. And then, uh, once I've got that done, we'll rotate it around and check clearances. Before I get back to the uh, valve checking, I'm going to go ahead and get this steering put back together. Put a new O-ring in here. It sticks out a little further than the other one, so hopefully it'll seal better. Got a new O-ring for the adjuster shaft. So we'll slip all that in. I'll put some sealant on the bolts and hopefully this won't leak anymore. Okay, I put a blob of grease on the adjuster to kind of hold it in place till I get this all together. Bring this in. Gotta line it up to where it'll start screwing into the hole. Start screwing it in like that as you're pushing the cover in. Okay, the cover's bottomed out. Got some sealing on the bolt threads. Start running them in. Keep your adjuster screw to where it turns freely while you're tightening this down so you're not preloading anything. You're just wanting to tighten the cover down. Now, start screwing your adjuster in again. And that's meshing the gears together. So work your steering a little bit. And I usually just put it to where it just snugs up. I you got an O-ring. Hold your adjuster where you want it and snug down your lock nut. And hopefully, she'll be leak free now. Okay, on the other side of the tractor, right there, there's a bolt. That's where you fill the gearbox back up. Uh, the proof meter sticks back here. I already had the cable undone, so I just took the two little nuts off, slid it out of the way. That gives me good access. We'll fill it up to the bottom of that hole there. And then if we want to add a little more, you can add some down through this vent hole. Or if you've got the steering wheel off and the bearing out there, you can fill it right down the, uh, the shaft. You usually want to keep it a little higher than that bolt just to keep that top bearing in the oil. And since my pump had a hose that fit tightly into that hole, what I'm going to do is just pump the system up with the little plug out of the top. As soon as I get a little bit out of the top, I'll stop, pull the hose, hose out, and slap the bolt in right quick. That way she'll be totally full up past the top bearing for sure. But since the oil's a little cold, i got to let it, uh, let it uh, work its way down through there. We've got another jug of oil sitting in some hot water, warming up. While that's filling up, we'll go ahead and start on the valves. Now, the first thing I had problems with was getting down to turn the engine over. That bolt down there on the pulley is recessed back in the pulley. It's a little hard to get to. So I'm like, well, this engine's set up for a crank. Let's just build a crank. I just built this out of some 3 8 inch rod which is not sturdy enough to like crank the engine over to start it but it's plenty good to just turn it to check the valves get it in the teeth there 
over she goes. Now, about a, I said I just had that 3 8 inch rod laying around. If I'd had some tubing or something a little heavier duty, I might have milled an actual started up crank. Okay, I'm gonna slowly crank this around watching the uh, valve action there on the number one cylinder because we need to get a pretty close top dead center. The rotor, when it's at number one, firing position will be about exactly opposite of where it's at now. now right now, the exhaust valve is open. So we're on the exhaust stroke. Exhaust valve closes, intake opens. Pretty dang close to top mid center. And I can turn both of the uh, lifters. So there's definitely some clearance. We're not holding the valve open. So let me look up the specs and I'll grab a feeler gauge and we'll check them out. Okay, the specs for the intake valves are 10 to 12 thousandths. We'll slide a 10 goes in, no problem. 12 is very tight. So I'm gonna call that good. The exhaust is 14 to 16. They always run a little more clearance since the valve, everything gets so much hotter. 14 was a no-go, which is the minimum spec. So the exhaust is a little tight. Okay, the exhaust is at a 6,000. And it needs to be 14 to 16. So we are going to get to adjust the valves. So right now, before I even bother checking any of the others, I need to build a tool to hold the lifter in place. So I'll get busy on that. Okay, we are in business on adjusting these valves. Had to make a tool. I ended up using a snap ring plier with the 90 degree tip on it. And you'll have to make two of these. Just the same, just for the other side. You know, because the factory tool's coming left and right hand, so this one's coming left and right hand. Now, uh, what you do is with the prong, works real similar to the uh, factory tool. You put it in the hole. With the notch you cut out, you catch the bolt adjuster on the opposite lifter. You take your wrench, had to modify 7 16 and it says in the in the service manual you'll need to modify it however you need to get it to reach in there. So that's what I did was put a little angle to it and then cut a tip off. Put that in the hole, catch the adjuster on the other side, then you can slip the wrench in and make sure that you, sorry it's hard to see, make sure you catch the lifter adjuster with the tool. Don't put it on the end of the valve stem because you don't want to side load the valve stem. But the factory tool catches the uh, the nut on the lifter. And once you got all that in there, then you can turn <coughs> the adjuster. And they are stiff. I mean, obviously they don't, since they don't have a lock nut, they can't be loose just sliding around and that was turning the adjustment let's see where we're at now because we needed a bigger gap on this one all right now we're at a 14. yeah 16 won't go through real tight fit so we're good now you might be thinking that you figured the valve gap would get looser as the lifter and the cam and everything wear, but you've got two different wear modes on a valve like this. You do have wear on the cam, wear on the lifter that will make the gap looser, but you also have the valve slowly receding into the head. And when the valve comes down, that takes the clearance out. So that will reduce the clearance. So it can go both ways, depending on what's happening with the valve track. Now, the problem, the problem with uh, 
The reason you want to adjust these is because too loose makes noise, too tight can burn them out because you have to have the clearance in there to account for heat expansion. And since we were well below the minimum, you could get to the point to where the valve, once everything heated up, the valve didn't actually touch the head completely. And that's where the heat transfer happens from the valve to the head. Well, let me rephrase that. On this is from the valve to the block since it's a flathead, but that's where the heat transfers when the valve touches the valve seat. Now, if you don't have that heat transfer, the valve will continue to get hotter until it finally splits. And then you'll be tearing it down and putting new valves in. So it's important to have the gap right. So now we can move on to the next two. And according to the service manual, you should be able to just rotate the crank 180 degrees and go down the firing order. And the firing order is one, two, four, three. So rotate it 100, 180 degrees, we'll be able to do two. Rotate another 180, we'll be able to do four, and then back to three. Yeah, both of these valves are now closed. Got clearance again. We'll start with the intake again. And it is supposed to be 10 to 12 thousandths. And it is too tight. Six went, nine won't. So it needs loosened a little bit too. And these adjusters screw in, screw out right hand thread if you're looking down from the top. So if I wanted to increase the gap, I'd turn the wrench this way. Looking down from the top would be clockwise, and that will screw that adjuster into the lifter and increase the clearance. And I'm going to need to trim the handle off my tool because it interferes with the, the section of the block right here. And that'll make it even more like the factory tools, real small. And I would definitely not recommend building a tool if you don't have to. I would just buy the ones from Steiner or wherever. I'm just, uh, wasn't planning to hit. Oh, 10 will almost go. So she just needs a little more. And a 10 goes in. So the intake is good. Now let's check the exhaust. It again is way too tight. So now I've got to make a tool like this go in the other direction. Okay, the tool going for the other direction worked just fine too. Either push or pull on it, whichever way you need to move the adjuster. Rotate it 180 degrees, check number four, then go back and check number three. Valve adjustment's done. All the rest of them needed some adjustment. They were all on the tight side again, so. Everything is now in spec. So back to cleaning. Get the I've got the valve covers in the uh, parts washer. So we'll get them cleaned up, get the covers back on, and get this thing buttoned back up. With a little more tweaking on the tools, they absolutely work just great. So uh, I'll put them in the 8-in parts box, and they'll be ready for the next time. Probably in another 40 years. <laughs> I need to actually look to see what the hour interval is for adjusting them. Because I know they haven't been adjusted in forever. And I got the covers out of the parts washer and cleaned them up. And I just discovered something that I didn't realize. That breather is not supposed to be on that valve cover. I had a guy ask the other day why my oil filter was on the right hand side of the tractor. And I'm just like, no, it's just, that's a breather. It, the oil fill is on the left hand side. And uh, I didn't think any more about it. But then I got to looking at this and Look at how that's done in there once I got it cleaned up. That has been cut with a torch. That inner piece is just hacked open and pried up a little bit. And then down in there, it's got a little baffle that's just barely open. So this is definitely a homemade add-on. And I did not realize that. It has just always been on the tractor. But then I got to looking at other pictures of 8 ends, and nobody else has a big breather sticking up there by the carburetor. So since it's so poorly done, 
and not supposed to be there anyway. And I've got the welder up here in the shop. I'm gonna cut it off. Okay, while I was waiting for my valve cover repair to cool, I was working back on the steering. I filled that up to where there's just a little oil coming out the top so we know everything is full, top bearing is lubricated. So now we gotta pull that hose out and quickly put the bolt back in. Now since the bolt is just straight thread, I put it, and it's straight thread and it goes through part of the, uh, goes through part of the dash panel before it goes into the gearbox. I went ahead and put an O-ring at the base, put some Teflon tape on it, and put some number two Permatex on So That's what I did last time and it didn't leak. So that's what we're going with this time. So pull the hose out, put this in, tighten it up. And the steering is done. Now, since I, uh, since that was a real hack job on that valve cover, I, and it's not real visible, I wasn't too worried about it. I just cut out a little disc of sheet metal, welded it on there. I'll probably pick up another valve cover that's unmolested at some point and change it out. But right now that'll work just great. So I got the valve cover gaskets uh, tacked down to the covers. Use a little bit of that Hylamar blue. I'll put some on the gasket and some on the block. It'll make it a little more difficult to get off later, but hopefully it won't leak. Uh, it showed some washers, ceiling washers under the nuts. There wasn't any on there when I took it off. So I grabbed a couple of copper washers, put some of the Hylamar blue on it, and hopefully that'll seal up where the bolt comes through. All right, we're making progress. I've got the governor back on there. Had a little issue with it. I noticed when I'd had it off before, I had cut a new paper gasket for it and put it on there, and it has still been seeping a little bit of oil. So instead of a, a gasket this time, I put some uh, Honda Bond on it. Stuff that you would use like put a motorcycle case together. Well... That stuff's pretty thin, and I bolted it together, and this whole section in here, basically the whole section in between the bolts, wasn't even touching. So that means that well, having a gasket in there, it has warped the housing a little bit, because it pinches down harder on the ear section, and the gasket will compress there, and it's raises out on the middle part and over time it'll get kind of a bow to it so instead of a gasket i put a generous layer of silicone all around it because it won't get into the oiling system the way that generator or the way that governor's hooked up so i tightened it up just enough to start squeezing the silicone out and it was squeezing out along this section here so it'll seal nice give it about an hour to cure and i'll go torque that back down Right now we're going to put the, the manifold back on. Got some new gasket from it from Tractor Supply. And I'm going to go ahead and just put bolts back in it even though it's supposed to have studs. I just had the one stud and I tore it up trying to get it out. So I just got one more bolt to go in there. I chased all of the holes. So they're clean and dry. The bolts are clean and dry. So we'll just put sealant on the bolts and put it right back on there. It should be good. Hey, it's about all but done. Got the manifold back on there. Got to wait till tomorrow. Let the sealant dry on the bolts. Same thing with the silicone on that. Got the linkages hooked up. Proof meter cable back on. So I just need to put the breather and the new muffler, which I will do tomorrow. It's kind of been a rush job on this project. I wanted to do some more cleaning and probably paint the manifold and some stuff like that, but I got a call first thing this morning from my daughter. She's headed home from work, got problems with the car, needs the heated garage, and it's like, you've got great timing. I just pulled the tractor in there and tore it down. My other option is to take the airplane out and set it outside, but rush this, get this back together. She'll be here about, it's Friday night. She'll be here about 11 o'clock tomorrow. By that time, I'll have this running and out of here, but it was just like nice timing. But that's how it goes with kids. All right, it's Saturday morning. We're ready to finish this project up. Got the muffler here.
Got to fill her back up with coolant. And I did remember to put the block plug back in. Pretty much right before I started pouring coolant in it. But hey, better late than never. Well, except for firing it up and backing it out of here, this project is done. That was a pretty fun project. Got to build some new tools. Got the new crank for the front. Got the little tools for adjusting the uh, lifters. I will put a link to the actual tools you can buy from like Steiner or something in the description. That way you don't have to build your own. I also did check and the adjustable lifters like this have are still available. Like at Steiner, they were $16 a piece. But if you've got a, a 9.2 or an older 8 in, it's recommended that you put the newer style in there if you're uh, doing a rebuild or anything and have it apart. That way you can actually set the valve clearance. So let's get her fired up and get her out of here.